Fresh Prince, Pogs, Nintendo, Capture the Flag, and Pizza Pockets. Those are just some of the best memories that I had in my childhood. But one of the best had to be the Scholastic Book Fair. You guys remember the book fair, right? There was nothing like the book fair. It was Disneyland for nerds, and I was a nerd. So I loved it. There was nothing like when the book fair came to town. I can remember spending weeks in advance just doing all the chores around the house, hoping to save enough allowance money so I could actually buy the latest R.L. Stein book, showed it to Goosebumps, Say Cheese or Die. Anybody remember that book? It gave me nightmares. The original Chucky, um, it was so scary. Um, but I couldn't remember that feeling of the book fair. And when the book fair would come to town, I would get so excited, I would get so pumped up, there was nothing better. But it wasn't all love. I hated these books. You guys remember the magic guy? Hated them. My friends would put them in my face. Ross, do you see it? No, I don't see it. 100%, I still can't do the thing that everybody else can do with their eyes to see what you see when you look at these things. I can't do it, still can't figure it out. But I love Waldo. Waldo was my dude. I loved Waldo. I could spend hours looking for Waldo. Today, kids fall asleep with iPads on their face. We used to fall asleep with Waldo books on our face, whether it was in Jurassic Park, whether it was on a Viking book, on a boat somewhere, whatever it may be, I would spend hours looking for Waldo. And the, the actual gratification that you would get when you would find Waldo was unbelievable. It was undeniable. You would find Waldo, hey, mom, I found Waldo. Hey, dad, I found Waldo. They would get annoyed. But at the end of the day, there was no better feeling than finding Waldo after spending an hour looking for this guy in a book. And I think today, the modern day marketing equivalent of looking for Waldo is looking for great content ideas that are actually worth creating. It's actually spending the time to uncover an idea that you should actually bring to life. Right? There is no better feeling than actually coming up with a content idea that works. There's no better feeling to come up with a content idea that ranks, that generates shares, that generates engagement, that generates links. There's no better feeling in the world than coming up with that. But there's no question it's hard. Right? The same way that finding Waldo many years ago was hard, finding a content idea worth chasing is extremely difficult today. And to ensure that that content drives results is becoming even more difficult. We've already heard earlier today about how Google is becoming a destination. Because of that, it's making our jobs harder. So it's harder than ever to uncover content ideas we're chasing. But when you find it, when you find that piece of content, there is no better feeling than seeing the idea that you came up with generating links week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter. There's no better feeling than creating a piece of content, getting a notification at 2 a.m. that you were able to generate some sales because of that piece of content. There's no better feeling. There's no better feeling than creating a piece of content that results in more subscribers on your YouTube channel, generating more leads to your email list. There's no better feeling. So how can we get that feeling more often? How can you ensure that you come up with content ideas that actually drive meaningful and measurable results for your business? That's what I want to talk about today. I want to give you a framework that I've used that our industry um, needs to embrace, rather than embracing this idea that it always has to come back to keyword research. Without question, I do believe that keyword research is important. But what I think a lot of us are falling into the trap of doing is falling victim to this idea of only using keyword research to come up with their ideas. There's a lot of different ideas that you can embrace when it comes to coming up with new topics, coming up with new pieces of content. And what I want to deliver to you is a framework that you can use in your business, in your career, that will help you ensure that you're creating scalable content efforts for years to come. I also want to get into the nitty gritty of it. I want to talk about some tactics that you can use to actually come up with these concepts. I want to talk through some of the processes that we've taken at Foundation, my agency, to deliver content ideas to our clients, but also in our own efforts on a regular basis. A lot of people think that coming up with content is kind of like the Mad Men days, right? But in reality, it often feels a little bit like this, but it doesn't have to be, right? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You can embrace a simple framework that is, without question, in my mind, going to reduce your level of stress and increase the likelihood of creating content assets that drive results. Three simple steps. Research, rethink, remix. That's the process. And when I talk about research, I'm not just talking about keyword research. Keyword research is important, but that's not where it ends. That's not where it starts, right? I'm talking about understanding the audience that you're trying to connect with, understanding the channels that they're spending time on, and spending the time to really uncover insights around whether your audience is spending time on a certain channel. Right? This, what you're essentially looking for is user channel fit. 
you learn exactly what type of content that your audience is consuming. You spend time understanding where they are, what channels they're spending time on. And once you've done that, once you've uncovered, yes, my audience is on this channel, it's time to figure out what content they're consuming on that channel that they're engaging with time after time, right? And when you do that, you start to rethink how you can apply that insight to your own industry, to the content that you would develop, the content that you would create related to your own space. Can you rethink the format of a piece of content that is generating a significant amount of results on a channel that you've already identified? Can you rethink the title of an article? Can you rethink the format that you would develop? Can you rethink the way in which you would tell a story from an entire different industry, but in your own space? based off of the fact that you've already uncovered user channel fit. And once you've done that, you move into what I call the remix. The remix, I like to say that the, the industry as a whole, marketing, we can take a lot of in, inspiration from music. Um, when we're releasing pieces of content for free, when we're putting out blog posts for free, when we're writing landing pages, ebooks, resources, all of this information for free, we're essentially releasing mixtapes, right? Um, there's another thing that we can do that is similar to the music industry, which is the remix, where you're taking inspiration from other genres, you're taking inspiration from music of the past, you're applying it to your own industry, to your current situation, to your own skills, and you're creating assets that you know your audience is going to love because they loved it in the past, or they loved what somebody else did, right? That's what you have the opportunity to do. You have the opportunity to take inspiration from things that have worked in the past, apply that to your own industry, apply that to your own space, and make great content. Now, some of you might be thinking, bro, did you just say steal people's content? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying just go out and start throwing your logo on people's content and calling it yours. That's not what I'm saying at all. I've had that happen to me with one of my companies, Hustle and Grind. We had this uh, Venn diagram for a purpose, and it went massively viral, made the front page of Reddit. It was shared on a handful of different Instagram accounts, and people started throwing in our logo. That is not a remix. Or that time on SlideShare, I created this deck about the ultimate guide to Instagram, had 400,000 views, and agents took it, put their logo on it. This is not a remix. Nope, 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 nope. That's not a remix. It's not a remix. A remix is when you take inspiration from somebody from an entire different industry, speaking to your audience, and then coming up with a unique way to leverage that insight to create content that can scale, right? Research, rethink, remix. That's the framework, that's the process, right? Keyword research still fits into all of this, right? It is still very important. But I think that a lot of us are falling into a trap. We're falling into a trap of tool fixedness, where all of us are using the same tools to solve the same problems, to go after the same keywords, and we find ourselves in a race to see who can update the date on their article faster than their competitor. We're in this race to see if you have a list of 85 things that you should do in XYZ, I'm gonna write 86 ways that you can do ABC, right? All because the keyword research tells us this, this is the content that we need to develop. I think that keyword research still has a significant amount of value and something that we definitely need to consider in the mix, but it is not the only way. When you use this framework, the step-by-step -step guide to essentially creating content ideas that scale, it gives you the ability to accomplish three key things. Channel user fit, content user fit, and then content market fit. During those first two steps of research and rethink, you're experimenting, you're tinkering, you're looking for insights that you can use to inform what you are going to create later. You're trying to find the channels that your audience is spending time on, you're trying to find the content that your audience is resonating with, and then once you've unlocked that, you start to use that insight to create content consistently time and time again, right? Once you've done that, you start to create content that you know is going to resonate with your audience, that can be distributed back to those channels, and that will drive traffic, drive leads, drive revenue, drive meaningful results for your business, right? And along the way, you have to ask the right questions. You have to understand the timeline required to get to channel user fit. You have to understand the key metrics that you should be looking at across the board. And you have to understand what it is you should actually do next, right? Let's go into the research side for a second. The questions that you ask during the research stage are going to be things that would validate the channels that your audience might be spending time on, right? Do we know that our audience is spending time on Quora? Do we know that our audience is spending time in a Facebook group? Do we know that our audience is spending time in a competitor's Q&A forum that we, have no, we don't have access to, right? Where are they spending time? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Instagram? What channels are they spending time on? 
you have to research the channels that your audience is spending time on. And once you've validated that, yes, my audience is here, you move into the rethink phase. You start to understand the content that was on those channels that stood out against the rest, right? This is where you start to look at the angle, the story, the hook, the message, and you rethink how you can capitalize on that to tell a story that they will also be interested in, but with your own brand purpose. What questions have the most followers on Quora? What communities um, have seen certain pieces of content rise to the top in a subreddit? What articles are generating the most links in your industry, right? All of these things will help you uncover content user fit. This is when you're tracking things like upvotes, you're tracking links, you're tracking comments, you're tracking shares, you're tracking all of these different engagement metrics. And when you have that, it's time to move to the remix. It's time to start creating content that you know people in this community are going to resonate with. This is when you start to actually create the content that you know your audience is going to engage with because you've already validated the channel, you've already validated the content that they want, and it's time to start giving it to them, right? And you do this until they are fatigued and tired of this content, right? You don't just put it up on uh, a blog and call it a day. You take that same idea, that same asset, you turn it into an infographic, and you submit it to Pinterest. You take that same idea, you turn it into a video, you upload it to YouTube. You take that same video, you upload it natively to Facebook and Twitter, and then you upload it to your Instagram story as well. That's the framework, right? That's the remix. Across the board, you have to measure things as well, though, right? During research, you need to think about activity volume. During the rethink phase, you have to think about how much engagement is happening on your content or the content within these communities. And during the remix, you have to tie it all back to business and organizational goals. We all know you can't pay uh, the bills with likes and engagements and shares and even links, right? You can't pay the bills with that. I tried once, M mortgage denied, right? You have to actually tie all of this back to meaningful and measurable results that drive business results, right? That's the model, that's the approach. But again, like I said, while this is the philosophy, research, rethink, remix, right? This is a model that you can use for a handful of different sites, a handful of different communities, but you can still even apply the traditional methods of keyword research here as well. Let's say you run a food blog and you go into your favorite keyword research tool, you type in, I'm interested in creating something about diet food, and Mediterranean diets is showing up as having a significant amount of uh, search volume, and there's an opportunity here for you to create an asset. That's great, go for it. I'm not telling you that this is not what you should do. You should 100% still embrace this model of using keyword research to guide maybe what type of blog posts, what type of articles, what type of landing pages you should develop. But that's not where you end. You're going to then take that and look over into Pinterest and see, are people talking about Mediterranean diets on this channel as well? Is there an opportunity to create a hierarchy of needs for the Mediterranean diet, right? Can you then take that and submit it into Pinterest? Can you submit that as a slide share presentation? What can you do, right? I think we are falling victim to only using keyword research tools as a crutch and not taking the, the next step, which re results in you diving into communities, diving into different spaces where you can uncover content ideas that go beyond what your competition may be doing. Research, rethink, remix. I talk a lot about communities for a few reasons. One, I love spending time in communities, not only to get content ideas, but also because communities are a great place to distribute your content as well. Right? So I love talking about communities because this is something that I think oftentimes is ignored, but it is where you can get some of the most, most authentic feedback from your customers, where you can get some amazing insights around what type of content they want, and very easily you can get access to the content that always rises to the top. And you can, try, you can uncover trends here. Let's say you're trying to speak to a very technical audience. You're targeting CTOs, you're targeting engineers, people who are um, working in the tech space, who are developers. You go to a community like Hacker News, right? You sort that content by the top posts. You know that your audience is there because they, that's a user channel fit and it's, in its essence, the developers, the technical people that you're trying to connect with are using this channel. So you sort the content by the top posts, right? This is like reverse engineering the content that you know they want. The content that is generating engagement rises to the top. So you start to look for trends, you start to look for insights. What is it that I'm seeing they want over and over again and how can I recreate this as an asset that I can then submit back to Hacker News, right? That's the process, research, rethink, remix. If you're trying to target marketers, maybe you're going after growth marketers or growth hackers, you go to growthhackers.com. 
you store content by the top post again. And you can quickly see the post that generated the most comments, the most upvotes, and you can use that to, again, uncover content ideas that will work for you, right? Or let's say you're trying to target SEOs, and you go into a community that um, has been around for a very long time, the Moz community, and you sort the content by the, the post of all time that generated the most responses. And you see this post from 2011. This post generated hundreds of comments. It had tons of engagement. You clearly can see that people were interested in this question back in 2011. What's your best hidden SEO secret? What can you do with that? You can write a blog post where maybe you reach out to 10 different influencers in the SEO space and you ask them, what is your best SEO hidden secret? And then you create an article about that. Or maybe you do a video interview series where you're asking the same question. You do a tweet storm where you're capturing that content and you're seeding it out to the, your community. That's where the opportunity lies. You then can take the same information, submit it to a site like Reddit, like I did a few weeks ago, with the exact same question to a small community called Big SEO, and you can start to see that in seconds, this was able to generate 65 comments, 32 upvotes, right? I took something that was created in 2011, submitted it to this community, and people responded the same way they did back then. It's simple, research, rethink, remix. That's the model, right? There's a lot of different tools that you can use to do this. This entire process of reverse engineering, or as I like to call it sometimes, the Sherlock homeboy effect, is really simple, right? You dive deep into content that you know will work based off of content that worked in the past, and you apply that to your audience, to your industry, to your space. Another great tool to do this is Quora. Quora recently announced that they have an ads platform uh, where you can definitely reach people for relatively cheap right now because it is so new. But beyond that, what's great about this platform is you can type in a keyword that is relevant to your industry, that is relevant to your target audience, and they will show you a handful of questions related to that phrase. If you're not familiar with Quora, it's kind of like Yahoo Answers but with a way better design. And people go to this site and they ask questions, right? So you go into Quora and you type in a keyword that is relevant to your industry. Their ads platform will now tell you how many weekly views different questions are generating. You can also plug these into your favorite SEO tool and you can see how much organic traffic the different questions are getting. And you can gain insight into what type of content you should be creating based off of this data. Not only that, once you've created that piece of content, you can go back to that question and you can answer it with the content that lives on your site, with the YouTube video that you created as a result of this. All of that can be seeded back into these communities. One of the first places that I used this model on was Reddit. I love Reddit. I've been banned a few times, but I'm back. I love it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Reddit is my jam. I love Reddit as a user. It's helped me win many fantasy football championships, but it's also a great site for just gaining great insights into different sub-communities, right? If you're not familiar with Reddit, it's essentially a bunch of different forums. And in each of these forums, people are very passionate about specific topics. So for me, I was interested in connecting with entrepreneurs. So I went into an entrepreneurship community and I started to look at what are the trends that I can notice that are rising to the top of Reddit. I started to realize that people on Reddit want authentic content, they want people to break down numbers, they want you to be very tactical, they want tips, they want tricks, they want you to break it all down. So I go into Reddit and I deliver that. I create a piece that's breaking down how you can grow your Instagram account. I throw in a little bit of swag by saying uh, how to grow your Instagram, take your Instagram account from zero to 50,000 real quick, real friggin' quick. Shout out to Drake. There's a couple Canadians here who were on stage earlier. Um, and then I also responded to a post with the same strategy where I broke down in detail how you can monetize an Instagram account, right? All of these posts were able to generate more than 40,000 uh, views. They were able to generate a handful of uh, upvotes, 200 here, um, 800 there, and they both made it to the front page of this sub community, right? All because I spent the time to reverse engineer what worked in the community before. Let's say you're trying to speak to people who are futurology and they're interested in the future, electric cars, plant-based food, et cetera. You can go into that entire community and again, sort the content by top posts. And you might notice that all of these posts have over 40,000 upvotes and they all have one thing in common. They're talking about Elon Musk. That's interesting, right? You know that if you're trying to speak to people who are future thinking, they're gonna be in a community about the future. So you have user channel fit. Now you see that they're interested in Elon Musk. Okay, content market fit. What can you do now? You can dive into your keyword tool. You can start to type in Elon Musk and see what else is showing up. 
and you can start to say, okay, I see that people are interested in content about Elon Musk memes. They're interested in how much money Elon Musk makes. Can we start to create articles about this, right? If you're in Seattle or you're in Canada, you can have a nice little puff puff and use these ideas and this inspiration to come up with an amazing idea, right? That's what you have the opportunity to do. If you start to see, okay, people are talking about Elon Musk books, you create that as a blog post, you create that as an article, you let that live, and then you submit it back to the community that resonated with you months ago. We did this exact same philosophy a few months back with um, this, in, this picture that we essentially put Elon Musk in an Iron Man outfit, we submitted it to the same community, made the front page of Reddit, right? It's very straightforward. Research, rethink, remix. That's the model. And the best thing about using Reddit is the fact that Redditors love links. We did this study where we analyzed the top subreddits um, in a handful of different communities, and there was a lot of different things that were different. There was a few things that were similar. And one of the things that was most interesting is that across the board, the most popular type of content was links. And why is this important? Because it gives you an opportunity to also reverse engineer the links that have generated a lot of love on Reddit. So let's say you're in a space like in um, the healthcare space. You can take WebMD, you can type um, site colon webmd.com, press enter, and Reddit will give you every single post on Reddit that ever included that URL, and you can sort that content by the top post to better understand what type of content uh, you should be creating. You can understand exactly what pieces of content Redditors loved, from a different URL, from your competition, from people, from a site that uh, your users are spending time on. And you can use that to gain insight, right? For example, let's say Investopedia is a competitor, or you are Investopedia. You submit your site into Reddit, and you're gonna see a handful of articles and links that are relevant to your space, right? So there's two instances here where it's talking about how banks have therapists known as wealth psychologists who are, so, their sole focus is to help people in the 1% figure out what to do with all their money and how to keep their mind straight dealing with the billions of dollars that they have. That's interesting. So maybe you reach out to all of these wealth psychologists and you ask them, what is your tip for the average Joe who will never get access to you when it comes to thinking about their money? Or maybe you create an article that just breaks down the fact of how much these banks are investing in wealth psychologists and compare that research to how much um, your country is investing in psychologists in a, on a global scale or, or in comparison to them, right? There's tons of different angles, tons of different opportunities that you can get just by embracing this model of research, rethink, remix. Another great site for doing this is Product Hunt. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. If you're not familiar with Product Hunt, it's essentially this site where people submit products that are cool and interesting, and they are able to get upvotes. They get upvotes based off of whether or not people think they're cool or not, right? So when somebody is launching an app, somebody is launching a new book, somebody's launching a new podcast, whatever they're launching, they go to Product Hunt, they submit it, and people have the opportunity to then download the app, download the service, learn a little bit about it, or they, I said about it, my Canadian's coming out, it's flaring up, um, about, about, this is when people typically start to figure out the, out, it's all happening. Um, <laughs> but Product Hunt gives you the opportunity to really understand what products people want in this space, right? Um, a lot of great products have launched there. Meerkat, uh, Inbox by Google, uh, Periscope, um, Ship Your Enemies Glittered. Anybody ever hear of that site? It's hilarious. You can literally do what it says, Ship Your Enemies Glitter. Or if you're like me, you can send glitter to your fantasy football teammates and people you're competing with. It was funny until somebody opened it and their kid got into it, but that's a different story. Um, either way, Product Hunt is a great place where you can get insights around what type of products people want but it's also an opportunity for marketers. Why? Because sometimes the products that are getting launched here are just content, right? There's this site called First Users, which is nothing but a landing page dedicated to showing how Dropbox, Instagram, Shopify, Airbnb, PayPal, et cetera, got their first users. And all they did was they had their logo and they had snippets beside them. This post made the front page of Product Hunt, it had over 2,000 upvotes and it generated like 10,000 visits on its first day. It's no longer alive. It's gotten shut down, it no longer exists. But back in 2017, this was a very hot product, right? Front end list, it's a very similar approach. It's just a landing page that is links to a handful of resources that you need to know about if you were trying to be a front end developer, a front end designer, right? Again, that product no longer exists. It had tons and tons of engagement, it had thousands of upvotes, but it's currently dead. 
it is now in a product that is called the product graveyard, which was also hunted on Product Hunt and had 2,000 upvotes. This is where good or bad products go to die. When they don't last, they don't live for a long time, they go into the product graveyard. Funny enough though, the product graveyard is also in the product graveyard. It's a 404 page now. But somebody caught on that this product had a bunch of engagement when it first launched. So they took that and they decided that they were going to remix this idea into Product Haunt, which is a new platform where you can actually check out all of the products that are now dead on Product Hunt. So you can go through this and you can see what products generated the most engagement on Product Hunt and use that to guide your own approach and your own approach to creating content. Facebook groups are also gold for this type of stuff. There's tons of Facebook groups. There's billions of, hundreds of thousands of Facebook groups and billions of people are using them every single day and you can go into them and you can get similar insights, right? You can go into these different communities like, let's say you're a coffee company. You go into a coffee roasters forum group and you can start to see that there are questions that people are asking. And when you start to see these questions, you can start creating blog posts answering them. So you see, we are looking for a good quote on our wall. What's your favorite coffee quote? So you create an article, 20 great coffee quotes for your wall of your, your cafe. That's the content that you can create, all by doing that research, right? And there's millions of Facebook groups. It's not just them. There's sports Facebook groups. There's SaaS Facebook groups. There's software Facebook groups. There's SEO Facebook groups. You can join these communities and start to reverse engineer and again, research and rethink the content that flo floated to the top and remix it for your own industry and your own space. But you can also just use your good old eyeballs when it comes to looking at SERP, right? You can actually just do a type in a search like best CRMs, and you can start to analyze and understand what is showing up. Instead of always relying on a keyword tool, just use your eyes and look and see, okay, so there's a list here, there's a list there, there's a directory, and there's another list here. That's interesting. So maybe if we wanna compete in our industry as the best of something, we should create a list post. And then you go down a rabbit hole where you're not just looking at your competitors, you go to an entire different industry to understand what's best in class of lists. And you come across Wirecutter. And you say, huh, what's Wirecutter's strategy for creating these lists that are ranking time and time again for no best noise canceling headphones, for the best um, headphones under $100? You start to understand what they did to differentiate themselves. And then you go a little bit deeper. You see Zapier's done the same thing but they're generating hundreds of thousands of dollars of value by simply creating lists of best free CRM, the best URL sh shortener, the best to-do list app. They're killing this list strategy, right? And if you're a coffee roaster, you can do the same thing. The best Keurig machine, the best coffee press, the best French press, you start to embrace this strategy all because you're embracing research, rethink, and remix, right? And then maybe you dive into looking at in another, another industry, like Investopedia and you see that they've created this keyword glossary where they're defining different keywords related to investments. And if you're in a new space like esports or crypto or something that's very new to the industry where people are looking for definitions, this again is gold, right? You can rethink what is working in other industries and that has worked for years. It's not just Investopedia either. either. Moz has done the same thing. They have tons of definitions when you're first into SEO where you can understand what is a domain, right? What is a backlink? What's domain authority? All of these phrases you can understand using their glossary. And you can use this for your own industry. Salesforce, multi-billion dollar company, does the exact same thing. And when you dive deeper into the pages on their site that generate the most volume, it's actually definitions. What is a CRM, right? What is cloud computing? These pages are generating the most value of their entire site. If you can research, rethink, and remix this inspiration and this info into your own industry, your own space, you can unlock similar results for your business. That's the model, that's the framework. And there's tons of other ideas that you can embrace as well, right? It's not just using the, um, the various things that you're finding in Facebook groups, subreddits. You can go out to uh, Flippa, you can go out to Instagram and sort the content on the top popular feeds. There's tons of different things that you can do but you have to also look at the hierarchy of content marketing needs, right? It all starts by understanding, is this going to align with our ROI, right? When you are left with a handful of pieces of content ideas, you look at, you look at this and you say, are we going to accomplish ROI? Check, okay, next one. Is this within our circle of competence? Check, okay, what's the cost to create this? Do we have the budget, do we have the time? If it's a check, you go to the last one and you ask, is this going to be shareable? Is this linkable, is it rankable? What's our competition like? And if you are still met with a significant list, I tell you this, 
Start to do the things that have the least resistance, but also give you the greatest opportunity to succeed, right? Go through your list, look at that list and say, do we have ROI? Is it in our competence? Do we have the time to create this? Are, do we actually have the opportunity to surpass our competition and give different weights to different things? And if something has a very easy path for you to succeed, embrace it, go down that path. And if even then, after you've started to chuck out some ideas, some of the things are trash, and you are met with still way too many content ideas, whew, friends, congratulations. You've just met the modern day version of the Scholastic Book Fair. Thank you so much, I appreciate your time.